Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and assalamu alaikum. Today is Sunday, November 19th, and we are on the 19th video in the Journey to Islam series. Today's topic is not one I expected to do today, so I'm out of order, but I think we should just talk about polygyny and talk about polygyny now. <laughs> As I'm going through the series, people are starting to ask me about Islam. And from their perspective, they hear that women are submissive to men. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we are all submissive to Allah. A woman's job helps hold people accountable. And a man's job helps hold other people accountable. But... I didn't necessarily see Islam as submission. Remember, my journey to Islam came through my friends. So I didn't hear necessarily what they said about the Muslim community. I saw it in action. <laughs> my friends, I thought, acted just like me. They were all leaders. And, and so um, their level of submission was to for the benefit of the family and they were submissive to Allah. Now, when they say that Islam degrades women, I don't see that because I think as the American culture, we don't value motherhood and that is destroying our families. We only value things that have a dollar amount associated to them. And since motherhood, what we consider free labor, we don't value it and we don't value it. And so the American culture degrades women who spend time outside of a nine to five job. And that's unfortunate. And so what I see Islam valuing women for the things that they should be doing in providing for the family, which includes raising the children and holding their husbands accountable. But I can also say that I think polygyny is beautiful. <laughs> and my friends will tell you that I thought that before I embraced Islam, because I know men cheat. I absolutely know men cheat. And so Islam is actually enhancing the status of women to that of wives instead of girlfriends. But women have to partake in that process. And for me, the only way that I was going to do that is if I could be in a situation where I have freedom. So for me, Polygyny is not about the man. It's about Nicole Newman. It's about me, myself, and I. Because I want a husband and a wife. Because I don't like cooking. And so through my children's experience, they would go over to another Muslim mom's house. And they would tell me about the wonderful meal she made. And I was like, did you bring me some? Did you bring me some? Because that's not, cooking is not something I wanted to do. Nor cleaning, nor making clothes, nor any of that. So I have a very big appreciation for the things that Muslim women usually do. And when it comes to child care, mm, I think those are the best people that you want your children to be with. Because they have a moral foundation. So I don't have a problem with polygyny. But let me tell you, Muslims are not the only people who practice polygyny. Big Love was a whole TV show about the Mormon community that practiced polygyny. And in my research, I found out that Native American cultures practice polygyny. So it's not a Muslim thing but it is an economic thing. So this is what Encyclopedia Britannica says about polygyny. 
Polygyny has several economic, social, and health advantages over monogamy. In most cultures, women contribute significantly to the wealth of the household and thus can materially benefit from the labor of an additional spouse. Where mortality rates of men consistently exceed those of women, polygyny can be seen as a resolution to the deficit of males and the surplus of females. And that's what we have right now. Socially, co-wives and their children may accrue enhanced status and prestige as members of a large and therefore inherently prosperous household. See, when you have more people doing the work, the cost for the work decreases. So if you have one person living in a house and the mortgage is $2,000, that's $2,000 one person is paying. But if you have six people living in that house and they're all contributing, then that house is $333 per person. And it's the same thing with food. Costs decrease as more people get involved. In societies that provide no institutionalized role for unmarried woman, the status of co-wife may be preferable to that of a single woman. So a co-wife gives you status as opposed to a single woman. So I didn't understand that I actually was losing my wealth by remaining single. So that's why we're going to have this conversation about polygyny now. Because marriage as an institution, no matter which way you cut it, whether it's monogamy or polygyny, is a wealth building activity. Why ain't nobody tell me that? Thank you for joining me. And assalamu alaikum. Good night.